first particular image is an image of Robert Carter, who was executed on May 18th in 1998. Nothing particularly important about Robert Carter's particular execution, except that what transpired on that corner. Um, there were 14 people on the corner with me at that particular evening. Most of them were from um, out of the country. There's a group that call themselves the Journey of Hope. They've come through Texas. The Journey of Hope is a group of people who are members of a, a group called Murder Victims, for Murder Victims Families for Reconciliation, people whose loved ones have been murdered who oppose the death penalty. And they do a journey of hope every year to try to break the silence about what's happening. And they happen to be on the corner, Robert Carter's execution. But more importantly, there was a group of people huddled far away from the corner, usually where the people who are there with the victims' families stay, away from us. One of the young women came up to me and came up to the crowd and was asking questions, and they directed her to me since I seemed to knew, know what was going on. And she comes up to me, and this is roughly the, com the correspondence, the communication that I have. She comes to me and she says, how long is it going to take them to get the body from here to the morgue? I'm really not sure, I say. I'm not sure of the exact protocol, but I understand that they try to get the body to the funeral home as quickly as possible. Why do you want to know? My father, she says, is Pedro Muniz, the man who will be killed tomorrow. And I hope that they're able to get him there soon enough. Soon enough for what, I ask? She says, so that I will be able to know the warmth of his touch. I was born when he was in jail, waiting trial, and went straight from there to death row after, after that, so I've never been able to touch him, you know, to feel his warmth, to touch him. Oh, I stammer, as the weight of this statement fills my soul with anger and pain. At this point, I'm sure, I say, that they're able to get your father to the funeral home in time for you to feel his warmth. I've heard other, other family members talk about this before. This is a 21-year-old woman who has never touched her father. In Texas, there are no contact visits for men or women on death row. She was able, fortunately, to get to the funeral home in time. This is her father, Pedro Muniz, who was executed May 19th in 1998, um, executed for the rape and murder of a 19-year-old white woman in Georgetown, Texas, a crime for which he claims that he was innocent. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of his particular execution, except that his is a good example of someone under George Bush's administration, he was governor at this time, who was executed for a crime he certainly believes he didn't commit, and his family certainly believes he didn't commit, and I have a reason, I have reason to believe that he was innocent, and, um, and that in fact he was uh, one of those victims of the error that, we're, that, that Camus tells us is infallible. And then finally, an image of Larry Robison, the man that we execute. But the image that, al that always calls my eye when I look at this is, the, is the, the pained look of the woman holding his portrait. The woman holding his portrait is his mother. We rarely think about the family members of the executed. Camus even talked about them in his essay. Larry Robison was executed on January 21st, 2000. Larry Robison was a mentally ill man discharged from the military for schizophrenic episodes. His mother is a school teacher, not a poor woman like Munez or Carter's family. Um, and her husband, his father, is a school teacher. And they desperately tried to have him committed to the Texas State Hospital system. But he was, they were told he didn't present any particular danger to himself or others. And that once he showed a danger to himself or others, they would put him away where he would be safely treated for his particular problem. His first expression of violence or danger occurred, um, occurred one evening when he had a psychotic episode in an apartment complex where he was living and brutally slaughtered five people and killed them all. And his mother, believe it or not, and only mother can understand this, maybe father as well, his mother, after reading about the horror and hearing about the horror of the murders, said to herself, Thank God my son will be safe now. Thank God he will be taken away from the streets and he'll be in a hospital. He didn't. They, in Texas, you can be executed if you're mentally ill, ostensibly not if you're mentally retarded. Larry Robison's only act of violence killed, took the lives of five people. No small act, but the pain on that woman's face 
is a pain that calls forth a, a, a demand for compassion, I believe. Um, this is, this is, is Robert Carter. His final statement, he says to the witnesses witnessing his execution, I love all of you. Thank you for caring so much about me. Keep the faith. I'm going to a better place. I hope, I'm going to a better place. I hope the victim's family will forgive me because I didn't mean to hurt no one or kill no one. I love you all. Pedro Muniz, final statement. I know you can't hear me now, but I know that it won't matter what I have to say. I want you to know that I did not kill your sister. I want you to know the truth, and you deserve to know the truth. Hire your own investigators. That's all I have to say. Larry Robison. This offender declined to make a final statement. Reflections from Hope Beyond Postmodernism. If you're also familiar with Camus, one of Camus' more famous works is called The Myth of Sisyphus. And in The Myth of Sisyphus, he kind of portrays man as, as struggling constantly to, to roll this rock to the top of a hill, only to have it roll back down to the bottom, and then he goes back again, having to roll this rock up to the top of the hill, only to have it roll back down. That's that futility, that hopelessness that Camus provides for us. And I wonder whether a man can overcome that sense of hopelessness, especially in the face of the abattoir. I wonder if he's right. Is the instinct that man has an instinct for life and hopeful compassion, or is it an instinct for death and for sadism? And perhaps that's part of our nature. 